Good morning, this is Zakura Kant, and welcome to my long-awaited reintroduction re video. So, just so you know, I'm probably going to be looking at my notes occasionally, because I can't remember everything I want to tell you wonderful people, you, you and you, all about my story, um, my background, and yeah, just some fun facts about me. So, I am Zakura Kant, woo! Uh, in fact, originally I was a Kuwa Boateng and my family is from Ghana in West Africa. Uh, my dad was in the armed forces and so we spent uh, time uh, trailing him around the world. He had postings in Germany, uh, West Germany, in Rinton, um, also in America, so Bethesda, Maryland. He worked at the Water Reed Medical Centre uh, and we spent some time in different parts of the UK. So, um, Polite, Church Crookham, I went to secondary school there, uh, Portsmouth, um, he worked at Brimley Park Hospital, and I went to Brunel University uh, in West London. But before we carry on with the story, um, my educational background wasn't easy. Um, I was left handed, uh, writing in fountain pen wasn't easy, I was sponging a little bit. Um, and having a slightly awkward grip, uh, but also um, not being a hot on mathematics. Uh, and mathematics in the days when I was at school was a key uh, prerequisite to getting entry into university. So um, it was tough um, because once you are, you know, labelled as you know not being as fast as your peers uh sometimes you can get yourself into a little educational box because you have to be um have special attention um and obviously um you know work harder to uh, catch up with your peers um and that's all fine and well and good but um it almost meant that i was left behind um and i say this because um at the time that i was going to university um, having a maths and a science GCSE in the UK um, was something that you had to have and I was never going to get a maths GCSE and that was down to uh, my dyscalculia. Um, dyscalculia is a severe, I'm just going to call it maths dysfunction. Um, numbers don't mean much to me. Uh, I've had many a maths tutor um, and uh, that's just not one of my strengths. Secondly, while we're in this uh, zone, I also have dyscalculia. So you may notice occasionally on some of my posts, um, there are spelling mistakes. Um, and that is down to that. And sometimes we're just not checking. Um, so that is that is that. But the point here is that um, if you don't ask, you don't get. Because if my mum had not been um, my advocate, my cheerleader, I'm the person who saw potential in me, um, you know, those entry requirements I wasn't going to meet, I may not have actually have gone to university, but she was determined that we speak to universities and ask what um, flexibility there could be in those entry requirements. Um, and so that was her helping me to find um, my opportunity um, and my voice um, to go to university. I have to say, I was a shy child, very empathetic um, and um, not very resilient. And it's taken me time um, and years um, and my own personal development journey um, to become um, the woman that you see today. So my message there is, um, just because you start one place does not mean you end there. If you're open to learning um, and new opportunities, you can definitely uh, find ways to build your skills, um, your resilience, um, and changing your mindset. So what about, um, bit about my career? So as I was saying, uh, I did get into each university. I studied political science at Brigham University, which was fantastic. Um, and I, off the back of that, I applied to join the UK Civil Servants as a junior civil servant and I became a personal assistant uh, in the cabinet office. That was my first uh, job 
and it was great. It was really good to um, work as a personal assistant. I had many um, wonderful experiences, um, learning that organization, um, keeping confidence, um, but also learning from how other people lead is something um, that's really helpful um, in helping you to develop your own skills and interests. Um, and off the back of that, I realized that my interests was in technology, but also organization. So I trained to become a project manager and I had the good fortune to um, work on many exciting digital transformation projects um, within government. Um, one that's really um, I guess close to my heart is the one on civic participation, which is registered to vote. So I was the lead project manager um, that developed the register to vote um, digital service um, in conjunction with the government digital service. Um, and that service allows UK citizens to get on the electoral register um, in under two minutes, which is fantastic. I am really passionate about people um, using their voice at the ballot box. It's just something that has always been um, really important to me. Um, and as I guess you'll hear my, my story, um, something that's driven me to travel overseas. Um, so before I come on to that story, let's just uh, finish up with the civil service stuff. So yes, the civil service was great. Um, what I loved about that was it allowed you, me to have the opportunity to work in different areas from um, policy to projects and different subject areas. I would say that the civil service is a great um, place to be if you want to have an opportunity for um, career diversity and um, world organisation because there's so many different um, things that you can do um, within it um, and internal moves that you can make. So what um, made me move uh, across the ocean to take an unpaid job um, at a non-profit organisation called Fair Fate. That was my desire um, to help young people in America in 2008 to use their voice at the ballot box at what was um, touted to be an exciting and pivotal election with a um, young inspirational senator called Barack Obama. Um, now we all know how that worked out, which is pretty fantastic, and I, for one, pleased about how that worked out. Um, but I didn't know um, when I left my job, um, applied for this unpaid internship, that that was definitely going to happen. Um, I took a punt, I took a risk, um, and it was because of my passion and desire to uh, help people to um, understand why it's important to vote. So, um, I should just round that story off by saying that whilst I was there, I um, found out about other voting rights issues in America. Um, the one that's close to my heart is um, DC vote. So the District of Columbia do not have a voting um, representative um, in uh, Congress um, and they pay taxes, um, they live there, they go to school there. Um, they contribute as full citizens of the United States of America, and yet they are disempowered. So that is something which I felt particularly passionate about. And um, whilst I was in America to my internship, I volunteered uh, with them to, um, you know, get that um, message heard more widely. Uh, and through volunteering with them, I had the opportunity to um, go with them to the Democratic Convention um, on my own steam. So I had to, you know, pay for my own travel. But you know, with a wide number of people um, that are going there as part of their, um, you know, organisation and their their, their uh, group grouping, um, I was able to um, find um, someone that would um, put me up for uh, the week of the convention. And that was super fantastic, so I really thank her. Um, and I was just there to really, um, you know, learn um, and see American politics uh, in real life because I learned about it as a student. Um, and it was so different to British politics. 
and I um, had a whale of a time and I never for one moment in my life imagined that I, Akua, would be um, part of a moment of history where I was to see um, Barack Obama, who was to become the first African-American uh, president of the United States of America, um, accept the nomination for his party. Um, and that was an absolutely amazing and incredible experience to be in that football stadium with 80,000 um, people who were excited um, and hopeful of um, a new dawn um, in American politics. And I can say that, you know, was one of the, the two highlights um, of, of my life. Um, so that was absolutely uh, fantastic. So that is a bit about um, my background and some of my uh, career highlights. I just wanted to say that career transitions is something that I am passionate about um, and I'm adept at. Um, I've been a civil servant uh, for about eight years. Uh, during that time, I also um, started entrepreneurial projects and I shifted from a permanent employee to a, a contractor uh, doing project management. I also transitioned to become a full-time female entrepreneur. So entrepreneurship um, and career transition is um, where I am going to be focusing um, my coaching on. And, you know, I am so excited to be helping women in these areas. So what does it actually mean? So that means that if you are a professional woman um, and you'd like to talk to me about your CV, um, LinkedIn, um, interview preparation and practice, um, and motivation for the job hunt, and thinking about how you could do that effectively, um, and, you know, with passion, with motivation, um, with confidence, I am your woman. So, female entrepreneurs, I am your woman. If you um, want to say that imposter syndrome um, and you really want to build confidence um, and let's think, what else? Oops. Yes, uh, and you're looking to, um, you know, face some of those fears that you have in your business. Um, I'm a sounding board to help you to think about um, making difficult uh, decisions because I can tell you that I have had to close um, one, one of my startups um, and that was really hard, but it was because um, it really wasn't working, but I know that it's really tough to come to that decision. And so sometimes um, we need to have someone else who can help us think about how we could change and how we can help our business grow and thrive. So I can help you in that space. So I just want to uh, let you know that um, Humble Practice Mondays is going to be um, relaunched, but it will be a one-to-one -one session. So whether you're a professional woman or whether you're a female entrepreneur, it's open to you and it'll be a one-to-one 20-minute -one, um, slot um, where you can come to me in confidence and we can talk about confidence issues, whether it's, um, you know, putting yourself out there, whether it's talking about your book, um, your blog, um, yourself, um, you know, any career confidence issue, um, whether it's about promotion or any of those types of things. Finally, just to recap on what I'm helping you with, overcoming fear, believing in yourself, turning action into action, and of course, being your enthusiastic cheerleader um, when you're not um, feeling able to cheer for yourself. I'm gonna help you to, bec to become your own um, fantastic cheerleader. So this is my video. Um, it is not perfect, but it gives you a flavor of where I'm going. Hopefully that is um, more clear. Um, 
on what I should be helping you is. And like I say, it's a journey um, and I will be updating my website, but you know, that's gonna take time. So what I encourage you to do is, if you think that I can help you, uh, just please send me a message. My door is always open um, for chats on career, um, getting into business, um, building up confidence, um, be bold, be brave, be marvelous, back yourself and become your number one cheerleader. Cause I'm rooting for you, you, you and you. You have a lot of potential. Don't let it die because of fear or imposter syndrome. No, open your mind, reach out. I'm here to help you because no one will be left behind on my watch. If you come to me, I will support you uh, and I will cheer for you. I will hold you accountable. And if I don't know how I can help you, I will find you someone that will help you. That is my promise. Um, so take care, look after yourself, be kind to yourself, be courageous, be bold. In fact, I'm gonna end with an affirmation. I'm confident, I'm powerful, and I'm strong. I am confident, I'm powerful, and I'm strong. And I believe in you. Take care, my friends. Bye.